I thought we would start with some real fundamentals today. Uh, this is something that I teach my white belts. It's a proper structure when someone has you in closed guard. So, Richard, if you want to put me in closed guard. And so I'm going to try to pass your guard like a white belt. Your goal is just to pull me down and to disrupt everything I do, okay? Because this is what I see all the time. All right. You know, so it's this kind of thing, back and forth, back and forth. And the question is, why are we allowing that? Well, we're allowing it because we have a bad structure. So in jujitsu, it's we have to use our bone structures in ways that let us be successful, especially against people that are stronger, bigger, and, and, and so on. So we're going to play a little game. And the game is with no hands first. So I'm going to root myself to the mat, get the structure, and I'll show you in a second what to do. And you need to just pull me down. Pull me down. <laughs> if your structure is good, now, someone much bigger, you know. But once you employ your hands, the hands should not be the primary tool. It should be the structure. The hands should be able to multitask because sometimes they have to hold Sometimes they have to open, they have to do other things. Sometimes they have to help prevent you from coming forward, but it's the structure. So let's, so you're rooted. Right now my spine is neutral, my pelvis is neutral, but what I want is to curl inward. So it's that curling, it's like doing a crunch. I'm rotating the pelvis like that. It's like the way I think about it, Anybody do kettlebells here? Let's say you rack a kettlebell. You have to engage the core. Everything's tight right there. So root like that. That's the structure that you need. And so once we have that structure, your opponent, or your partner should have much more difficult time. So I'm rooted now. And he should be able to do a sit up. And I'm holding. And so, so that becomes the game. So let's just start with that. No hands. Sometimes you have to elevate a little. If your partner is a little bigger than you, you know, he's pulling me, I might have to elevate a little. But you maintain that structure, that crunch, that core engagement, and the pelvis is tilted, uh, tilted backwards and engaged. Does that make sense? Okay, let's go. One, two, three. So in order for me to pass the closed guard, if his hips can elevate, I will never get passed. And more advanced players know that, which is why at the higher levels of jiu-jitsu, uh, nobody passes from your knees. They always stand up because against real skill, it's, this is very hard. But you should still know how to pass the closed guard from, from being down. And so the hands need to pin the hips to the mat. I always think, if I have a credit card, I shouldn't be able to get it under his butt. He needs to be on the mat. It can be a challenge. You know, everything's a challenge in jiu-jitsu. So we have our structure, we have our frames, we're connected. Uh, one of the hands sometimes has to float. Against guys, if he really holds on and he's really trying, I can move this to the sternum. See that? Does everyone see the, you know, there's a under the ribs, the sternum right there. The palm goes in, sometimes it floats. Just to, just to prevent, because you don't want to keep getting pulled down, and it's too much energy, up and down, up. You should be able to root and get your connected position, and then it doesn't matter what he does. He can't pull me down. And now, I mean, I can do this with maybe the biggest guy in the class. It's, if your structure is good, this should not be a problem. And now I'm going to begin walking backwards, holding the hips to the mat, just walking away, because I need a little gap to be able to get, like if you really hold on. I need a little gap to get my knee up the middle. And now I like to just keep pushing backwards and rounding my back like a cat, stretching, rounding the back. I'm trying to create pressure on the feet through distance and connection. So hips to the mat, walk backwards. If I don't walk backwards and I go to put my knee up the middle, he's gonna pull. My balance is compromised. We have to be able to move, keeping the structure. 
So you walk back a little to where I can get in without losing my structure. Round, I can feel the pressure on his feet, rounding my back. Now it's open, and then we can start you know, creating space and doing what we need to do. I'm a fan of moving away and coming around. Just going around the problem. So pin to the mat. Don't let the butt come up. And back, walk, in, round, push away, and then we can begin passing. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, one, two, three. Well, so the question is whether my feet should be flat or whether my feet should be up. Now generally, I'm a much bigger fan from everywhere of having feet up because that gives me movement potential. If my feet are flat, I don't have the movement potential. Flat feet, though, from guard gives you more stability. Sometimes, it, you know, everything involves compromises in jiu-jitsu. You have more stability, more ability to root to the mat when your feet are flat. This gives you more potential, but you're up higher. But you can still pass the guard with the feet up. And a lot of times this is what I do. Just get my feet up. And because I'm up higher, you can just push the knee and open. Now against someone with very strong legs, sometimes you can't, you can't do that. But if I'm up. What helps is if I can make my arm straight, create a structure. And because my arm is too long, I can lean and then straighten. See how I'm able to get my elbow straight? Now I can pop. Pop, and then we're past. So let's play with that a little bit. Just get on your feet, straight. Boom, open. I already have the knee pinned. Let's keep the pin. I go to the hip with the other hand. Now I'm around. I can move this way. I can move this way. We can transfer our weight. We did some of this yesterday. Transferring our weight into our partner so that we can be mobile while we pin. And uh, let's just use that, continue with that concept. Okay? One, two, three. So we were just talking uh, that it's hard to keep people's hips off the mat if they want their hips off the mat. So if I put Richard in guard. And if I want to elevate my hips, and especially if I pull my heels, right? Pull my heels into my butt and elevate. Go ahead and pass my guard. It's kind of hard. <laughs> you can prevent. So don't tell anybody, because this is a secret in jiu-jitsu. If you elevate your hips, people can't pass your guard. So don't tell anybody. <laughs> Just frustrate them. And they won't know why. That guy's guard is impossible to pass. So, which is why it's better to stand. Uh, or semi-stand. I'm going to show a technique. I learned this from uh, Luis Heredia, who was one of Hicks and Gracie's early black belts from Hawaii. And I, I lived in Maui for a year and trained there. Uh, Wait, and the, and the can Hawaiians. You, can you repeat that? And the, the Hawaiians, they're the friendliest people in the world, but when it's time to fight, it's on. It <laughs> is on. I would call Roy Dean every day after training. I think I'm quitting. <laughs> no, 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 you'll get it figured out. I got heat stroke one day. They would, it was an old pineapple canning facility with a metal tin roof. They would close the doors and turn off the fans to train. Brutal, absolutely brutal. I was messed up. I was passing out on the mat and I was, my blood pressure was, it was, it was hard. So I would, I learned that I had to just hydrate, hydrate, hydrate before going to train. I would drink a liter of coconut water right before I walked in the door. And it was hard training and friendly, oh, good to see you. And then they would kill you. <laughs> Especially if you're a Hawaii, right? A white guy in, 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 in Hawaii, they're not gonna tap to that guy. They're gonna kill you. <laughs> so, but this was how he liked to pass. And again, you know, if he's plank, that's a problem. So I'm gonna go palm down on the collar. I like to go to palm down on both sides, but one can be up or one can be down. I think Roy Dean does one up, down. And not too tight because what I want is to come around the neck. If I'm too close, it's not gonna come around. If I'm too far, it won't come around. So you need to find where that distance is so you can come around the neck. One goes around, the other one pulls. I may or may not get a tap from choking him, but usually they're gonna open their guard. So I, I wanna get on my toes here, and then I'm gonna come up and just get the tap. But usually what happens, he opens. 
and now I need to pinch. This is what prevents, if I'm not pinched, he's gonna grab my ankles and sweep me backwards. I pinch, he has no more leverage. I'm still holding the gi. I double up, drive my hips forward. That's the key to making this work. Hips forward. Move the foot across, and then we're back. One of my favorite ways to pass, because it works. So we need to prepare what we're gonna do. We get our grip. So, you know, once you've trained for a while and done this, people know, so you have to be a little, a little sneaky. Okay, I have my first hand in, you know, maybe I get my feet into position, I have my second hand in, step up, step up. I want him uh, under me. Now come back up, I'm actually gonna pull you in. There's a little detail that if you can do, makes it even better. I step up, step up, pull him close to me. Now I have more leverage. I can pinch, hold, hips forward, <laughs> and then we can come around. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. one, two, three. That's very good. Uh, hips forward. In, in wrestling, it's hips. In all sports, if you throw a baseball, it's hips. If you throw a punch, it's hips. Everything's hips. We don't use our hips nearly enough in jujitsu, and this is one example. Forward hips is more dominant. That's the source of your power. Uh, let me show one other way to use hips because, or to, to use the pinching motion, I should say, because um, you can use that from a variety of places. Let, let's say I, I come up, I come up, and I miss it. He, in order for him to sweep me, he's gonna grab my ankles, he needs to drop his hips, and now he's gonna sweep me back. And now he can come up. Sometimes people will just come through, go to metal. Uh oh straight to a triangle, and so on. <coughs> so I come up, and he sweeps me. Go ahead. Oh, 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 he beat me, he beat me. Go back. No, it's okay. <laughs> pinch. <laughs> if you can pinch, now he can't come up. Hips forward, same thing. I have feet, I can come out and kick through and come up. So anytime someone sweeps you, just pinch. And then elevate the hips. It's the same, you know, we operate in three dimensions. You can be vertical, you can be horizontal, but it's the same ways that we move our bodies, just in a different, in a different plane. So we're just gonna come up, he's gonna grab. I can start pinching early, but maybe he'll sweep me anyway. And I keep that pinch. The feet are always there. Hips up. So his feet are down. Hips up, allows me to get control of the feet. I need to hip away. We talked about momentum yesterday, using your legs for momentum to come up. Because if I just hip out and I try to come up, he's gonna react. So pinch, hips up, catch, kick up, and then we can come through. Cool, all right, one, two, three.